Hello and uh, welcome. It's been some time since I was uh, I was here. Um, it has been some uh, technical issues and uh, uh, constraints with um, work commitments. Um, that's why I have not uh, made a video. But um, I am back. I'm hopefully. Uh, time permitting, we shall be bringing out a video every week and uh, hoping that uh, there will be no more technical problems. Our, I want to thank all my, our new subscribers who have joined us in the meantime. You are highly welcome and I hope that uh, you learned a few things from this channel and um, that you, sh you stay with us as we go forward. Um, we are proceeding now to the nitty gritty of it. <laughs> we are going into the New Testament, so called, and especially the, the life and teachings of Jesus Christ and uh, Christianity and everything that comes with it. So it's going to be very hot. Well, at the same time, very educative and very informative. Today, uh, we are discussing the topic or the question, would Jesus be a Christian? If Jesus were to be alive today, would he be a Christian? You know the message is preaching, unless you accept Christ, you cannot be saved. Unless you give your life to Jesus, you cannot make heaven. And that Jesus is Lord, and there's no other way for man to be saved. So, what if I say to you that in all probability, based on the Bible itself, based on the Gospel, that probably, most likely, Jesus will not be a Christian. I will not be, I will not accept the doctrines propagated in his name. Will Jesus be a Christian? Today, I will provide you five reasons why Jesus will not uh, be a Christian and will not accept Christ if he were to be alive today. And all these reasons are coming from the Gospel. In the next episodes, next episodes or lectures, I will provide you with more biblical evidence and reasons why he would not be a Christian. The first reason why Jesus would not be a Christian and would not accept Christ was because he was a Jewish rabbi. He was a Jewish rabbi. A, Jew, a rabbi is a teacher of the law, a learned lawyer of the law. But, well, <laughs> a learned a lawyer. <laughs> so, rabbis are educated in the law and they teach the law and they enjoin observance and obedience of the law. Now, the Bible tells us in Luke 2, verse 41 to 49, that by the age of 12 years, Jesus was already um, learned in the law. He knew so much in, about the law that he was able in the temple in Jerusalem to argue and discuss intelligently about the law with learned scholars and learned teachers of the law. And uh, um, he was, the Bible says, he confounded the, 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 the scholars, the, the, the teachers of the law with his knowledge at 12. And he said that the temple was his father's house that the parents should not be worrying about him looking for him while he was in his father's house in the temple. 
He was a rabbi. He was addressed as such throughout the uh, Gospels. Mark 10, 17 to 22. I have just one instance of his, his being addressed as a rabbi. Um, he was on his way. A man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, the man says. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, Jesus said to him, according to the Bible, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. He didn't say, Why did you call me a rabbi? I am not a rabbi. No, no, no. He said, I'm a rabbi, but I'm not good. Yeah? Um, he says, You know the commandments, keep the law and all that. So, um, so keep the law, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, no steal, and all those things. So he recounted the Ten Commandments to this young man. I said, that's what you need to do to inherit now the kingdom of God. In other places, you see, look at John 1, 43 to 50, Matthew 22, 15 to 33, and other places, Jesus was addressed as the teacher or rabbi. This is the teacher of the law of Moses. Now, to cement his position as a rabbi, excuse me, the Bible says that Jesus went about preaching in the temple and in the synagogues. Now, to preach in the temple in Jerusalem, now the temple it's not just your ordinary church, for example. The, the temple is supposed to be a place or the place where Yahweh, the God of Israel, dwelt. You cannot preach in the temple <laughs> unless you are licensed to do so as a teacher of the law. You cannot, as a rebel or as a preacher of a different thing from what uh, the other rabbis preached, you can, they can't allow you in the temple. And in fact, uh, we were told on one occasion, he booted out and kicked out people who he perceived were doing in the temple things which they should not be doing, like exchanging money and selling stuff in the temple. John 2, 13 to 17. Jesus would not have been able to kick out people in the temple to have the audacity if he wasn't a rabbi who teaches in the temple, who had the authority of all the uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, religious hierarchy to, to, to be in the temple. Now, Jesus, we are told in the Bible, observed the Jewish feasts and festivals, including the Passover and the Sabbath. He observed them as a faithful Jew. You may look at uh, Luke 22, um, 13 to 30, Mark 14, 12 to 26, Matthew 26, 17 to 29. So Jesus, there's no doubt about it. If, if in fact he, was, he lived and was a man that actually lived and existed, and that's a different topic, but assuming he did live and exist. The Gospels make it clear he existed as a rabbi and a teacher of the law. The second reason why Jesus would not most likely be a Christian or accept Christ or belong to the church, Church of Christ, <laughs> um, is that he was reported to have declared himself that the law of Moses was valid and must be followed for eternity. The law of Moses, i.e. the practice of Judaism, was valid forever. Matthew 5, 
17 to 19. Matthew 5, 17 to 19 says, and I quote, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For I tell you truly, until heaven and earth pass away, not a single jot, not a stroke of, the, of a pen will disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So then, whoever breaks one of the list of these commandments and teaches others to do likewise will be called list in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, until your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is a very serious and profound statement. I have not come, he said, to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. That every aspect of the law, every part of the law, now remember the law is Judaism. The law and the prophets comprise Judaism. And Judaism is not Christianity. Jews are not Christians. Christianity is a different faith from Judaism. Christianity is actually anti-Judaism, anti-Jewish. But Jesus said, according to the Gospels, he had come not to disturb the law, not to abolish it, but to make sure to help in the fulfillment of it. And in fact, he says, until the end of time, until the end of heaven and earth, the law should remain supreme. You we know that Christians do not follow the law of Moses. Christians are not Jews. They are not, uh, they are not uh, part of Judaism. And therefore, there's no way Jesus, who was saying this about Judaism, would also be a believer in the gospel of Christ, which is saying that the only way to God is through Christ and not through the law. The two are inconsistent. I can't understand. Reason number three why Jesus would not be a Christian and wouldn't accept Christ <laughs> is that Jesus himself, according to the Gospels, enjoined that his followers obey the teachings of the scribes and the Pharisees. Matthew 23 1 to 3. Matthew 23, 1 to 3 says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, to the, his full listeners, followers, disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They sit on the seat of Moses. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Now again, this is profound and clear. He says, the Pharisees, the Pharisees are a sect um, of Judaism or a class of, uh, uh, high class of uh, uh, Judaism people who are uh, custodians of the law, uh, interpreters of the law, teachers of the law, scribes are the lawyers, those who are learned in the law. So he was saying to them, to his, law, his disciples and his followers and listeners, be careful to do everything the Pharisees and the scribes tell you everything they teach you because they are successors of Moses and they represent the authority of the law. You must listen to them 
you must follow them now even though they do not always uh, keep the law or do what they preach but what they preach remains valid that that is the law you've got to follow the church the Christian church doesn't teach people to follow the law of Moses does it and I tell people that the law is a cause the law is has been overtaken by Jesus that the law is no longer f useful that those who, who are under the law are under a curse <laughs> the same law that Jesus is saying to them you must keep the same law he's saying to them is valid for eternity forever until heaven and earth fall that this law must be kept there's no way Jesus can be on both camps like that if you were to have lived and if you were to live today he would not follow the teachings of Christianity which teachings are inconsistent with the teachings of the law which he endorsed as valid forever so the fourth reason I will provide today why Jesus would not be a Christian and wouldn't accept Christ himself is that the Jews are required to keep the laws of Moses forever. The Jews are required to keep the laws of Moses forever as their key to success and as their key to salvation. Now, and Jesus was a Jew. And not just a Jew, a rabbi. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9, Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames, on the door frames of your houses and on your gates basically saying if you are a Jewish person you have to be with the law and live the law eat it, sing it shout it recite it every moment of your life must be covered by the law and its observance don't forget Teach your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Pass it on from generation to generation. The importance of keeping this law. It must not depart from your mouth, from your eyes, from your ears, from your house, from everywhere you are. You must be with the law. As a Jewish person that Jesus was supposed to be, he would know, as a Jewish teacher of the law, by the way, he would know that this is the way he should behave. That you have to live by the law, eat the law, sing the law, think the law, hear the law. All around you, surround yourself with it. With that kind of setting of mindset, he cannot accept the teaching that says, forget the law, forget uh, the Old Testament, follow Christ. He won't do that. Now, finally for today, the fifth reason I'm giving today why Jesus will not be um, a Christian, will not accept Christ, will not give his life to Christ, <laughs> is in the fact that obedience Obedience to the law and keeping the law is not a matter of convenience. It's not a matter of uh, choice for a Jewish person. It's a matter of life and death. 
literally. It's a matter of survival. It's a matter of living or dying. It's the difference between wealth and poverty, between life and death, between progress and backwardness, between success and failure. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. It's a long passage, but I think I will take part of it. In fact, in the entirety of Deuteronomy 28 um, deals with the blessings and curses, so the blessings that come with obedience to the law and the curses that come with uh, for disobedience of the law. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. If you fully obey Yahweh, your God, and carefully follow all his commands I give you today. That was Moses saying to the people, Your God will set you high above all nations on earth. All these blessings will come to you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. <laughs> you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the cows of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks, your basket, and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in, and blessed when you go out. The Lord your God, Yahweh, we grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but will flee from you in seven directions. You will prosper, you will progress, you will be happy, you will be blessed, and so on. All imaginable blessings on earth is found there for obeying the law. All things you can imagine that is good is promised the people of Israel, the Jews, if they obeyed the laws of Yahweh, the laws of Moses. On the contrary, <laughs> all imaginable curses and hardships and evil and difficulty, problems in the world, you can imagine, and even the ones beyond the world, is promised as a consequence of failure to obey the law. Let's look at some of them. Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68 is a long passage, so I'll take a, only a few of them. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees, I am giving you today all these causes will come on you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Everywhere you go cursed. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed. And the crops of your land and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. Yahweh will send on you curses, confusion, and rebuke in everything you put your hand into until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking him, uh, in forsaking Yahweh. Yahweh will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. He will strike you with wasting disease, with fever, inflammation, scorching heat, drought, blight, mildew, which will plague you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze, the ground beneath you iron. <laughs> you have to cultivate iron to plant your food. 
there's no rain coming because the sky is bronze. You can't get rain, you can't get sunshine, you can't get water, you can't get anything. The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder. It will come down from the skies until you are destroyed. And it goes on. Every kind of problem, every kind of wahala, we shall call it, all kinds of imaginable suffering, sickness, disease, pestilence, hardship, he says, will come upon them if they were to disobey the law and not follow it. The nation itself will be destroyed, completely wiped out. So this is the situation. And don't forget that Jesus himself, according to the Bible, was supposed to be a Jewish person who grew up in the law, who were taught the law, who told people to believe the law, to practice it, to follow it forever. And he will know the consequence of not doing so. How could he follow, Christ, follow the church, follow Christianity that teaches people that the law is rubbish? <laughs> that the law is gone in the past? That um, once you accept Christ, all things are passed away, you're a new creature. Forget the law. <laughs> Those who live under the law are under a curse. This passage, this chapter is saying those who live by the law, the Jews who live by the law are blessed. Those who live by the law are blessed. Those who live against the law are cursed. Apostle Paul turned it upside down. If you live by the law, according to him, he tells his Christian friends, you will be blessed. If you go against the law, if you go against the law, you are blessed. If you live by the law, you are cursed. That is... <laughs> that is far from the truth of the law as delivered by Moses, who the Bible tells us got this law directly from God, remember? On Mount Sinai. And we are told, of course, that this God, this Jehovah, this year will never changes. So how then come? Yeah? That the law he says is valid forever and will bring blessings and abundance of everything. How could he turn around and say it's a curse? <laughs> he can't. So if Jesus were to be alive today, he would not. He would not. Going by what the Bible says be a Christian. He won't accept Christ. So, thank you for watching. Next lecture will be more reasons why Jesus probably would not be a Christian. <laughs> Until I see you then. I mean, if you like the video and you enjoy it, please pass it on and give us a, a thumbs up. Yeah, Subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, the difficulties we had with subscriptions have ended and you can now subscribe again. <laughs> uh, share the video and let me see your comments and I will respond to them once I get them. Yeah? Until I see you next week, have a blessed time. Bye.